What are all these ports and holes on a computer? Let's take a quick tour of this computer and we'll talk about what all the ports and holes are. First of all, on the front side of the computer, you'll see oftentimes that there's several holes or several ports. There's different symbols which tell you what the ports are for. So this little pitchforky symbol, that means it is a USB port and you can plug in anything that is a USB device. You'll see this one is numbered 1 USB. Over here, this is a headphone port, so an audio signal is coming out. You could also plug this into speakers. There is a microphone port where you could plug in a microphone so you could record your voice. And there's another USB port labeled USB port number 2. Also on the front of this computer, there is a power button. Normally with an operating system, if you press the power button, it will shut the computer down or turn the computer on. And this computer also has an optical drive to read or record information. This happens to be a DVD multi recorder and it records on dual layers. So um, there's another little symbol over here. It says DVD plus R dual layer rewritable. And over here it says compact disc, rewritable, ultra speed. So this will not play a DVD, but it will play a CD or it will record to a CD. It can also play a DVD or record to a DVD. And there's an eject button there. All right, so those are the ports in the front of the computer. Let's look around the back of the computer. This is a little more interesting. This is the part that people sometimes are not so sure about, really. Okay. So on the back of this computer, the most important port is probably the power port. There is alternating current electricity from the wall coming in right here. And right here, this you can see there's some screws, one, two, three screws. This is holding together what's called the power supply. Now the power supply converts the alternating current into direct current, just like a AA battery or a battery. And it outputs that energy to all the different parts inside the computer. There are like five, six, seven different parts that each have wires to them that gives them electricity. So this is called the power supply. Sometimes power supplies will burn out like if there's an electrical storm or a surge and these are not very expensive to replace. They only cost maybe thirty or fifty dollars. And so if you know someone who's familiar with computers they could probably look at it, figure out if the power supply is the problem, and replace that for you. Here's the more interesting part though, which is all the different ports right on the back of the computer. And we'll just go across from one side to the other. Right here, this one, and you'll see a little symbol. It looks like uh, square jaggedy teeth or something. This is called a serial port. This is one of the first ports that was available on computers back during the 1970s or 1980s. It used to be connected, used to connect to things like a mouse. Um, I don't know if keyboards were ever connected to it, but this was a long, long time ago. Nowadays, they aren't really used. This happens to be a school computer, so they're there for, I'm not really sure what reason, but they are there. You'll notice that this computer was, the, the back panel was made so you could have a mouse port and a keyboard port, the old style mouse and keyboard ports, but those are not there, so this piece of metal has not been removed. This right here is the video port, and this cable is going up to the monitor, and it goes into the monitor just here. It carries the video signal into the monitor, so there's a picture on the monitor. The monitor also has to have power, so there's a power port, which is it's basically the same sort of plug as is going into the computer. So the video port, this is also called a VGA, very good array, video port, or an RGB, red, green, blue, video port. Now there is a limitation on these ports. They cannot put out an ultra high definition signal. They can put out a high definition signal, like a 1080p signal or something around that range, but at some point they're unable to output a signal. So right next to there you'll see there is a 
another port, which is also a video port, and this one's called Display Port. Now this is newer as of around um, 2014 or so, and so m not all monitors accept a Display Port. It's uh, it looks kind of like an HDMI slot, which also connects um, usually to like a computer to a diff uh, high definition display. Over here, these are super speed USB ports. And there's two ways we know they're super speed. One way is that there's this double S with the little pitchforky thing there. The second way to know is that inside of the port, it's actually blue. And it's going to be the same thing on the cable that you plug in. It's going to be blue on the cable. You'll see these are number 5, 6, 7, and 8. Over here, there are two more of the USB ports labeled number 3 and 4, but these are not super speed. So if you have something which is a super speed USB, you're going to want to plug it into the blue because it'll go faster, two times faster or three times faster if you're like reading something off the drive or if you are writing something to the drive. So this is like if you plug a hard drive or a flash drive to the back. There are other devices that also plug into this like a scanner, for example, a high-speed scanner, which requires, uh, which has a lot of data coming out of it and going into the computer, you would want the fastest port available. Right here, this is the network port. You'll see the little symbol which represents three computers all connected to the same wire. You'll see a, one steady orange light and then kind of a blinking yellow light. And this port is kind of, it's shaped like a phone connector, except it's smaller. And instead of having four wires, it looks like it has about eight wires. Over on this side, three more audio ports. This one, you can see the music note going in, so this is an audio in. This one's an audio out, so you can plug in headphones or speakers, and here's another microphone port. The audio in, since there's not one of these on the front of the computer, I'll mention the audio in is usually used for, like maybe you have an old cassette player, compact cassette player, and you want to record the music into your computer, you could probably plug it in there. There's probably other uses for it, um, but it, it would be kind of like a microphone in. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what the difference is. It might be in what controls you have once you actually get inside the computer. Looks like there's a spot for another port here which is not being used. Over on this side, well let's go over to this all the way this side. You'll see two ports. They are USB ports and you'll see on the side of the cables as the USB pitchfork symbol. This one happens to be going to the mouse and this one happens to be going to the keyboard. Now these are additional ports and you can see this is like a inside the computer it's like a card that's plugged into the main board into the main part of the computer. Now why this computer needs so many USB ports I'm not sure. I'm not sure why it has an extra USB two USB ports but that gives it a total of four, five, six, seven, eight on the back plus two in the front, ten USB ports. These three spots here are spots where other ports could be added. Suppose in the future there's a new sort of data port that's faster than USB 3. You could get a card, a little um, uh, component like this one that would plug in here. You would take out this little piece of metal with all the little hexagons there and then you'd be able to plug in the new component. So that is what's on the back of the computer. I hope this video has been useful to you. If you found it useful, please press like or leave a comment. Thanks.